Niobrara's QUCM running the QRPC application emulates a typical Modicon NOE. It also provides expanded MSTR messaging to directly communicate with older Cymax PLCs. This video demonstrates simple MSTR operation within Unity Pro to read and write registers in Cymax Ethernet devices. We will use Unity Pro to make a quick project. Our system includes a CPU, power supply, input simulator, and QUCM. The input card is assigned to the default percent %I1 through 16. The QUCM is added as an NOE 77101. New communication networks are needed for the CPU and QUCM. The CPU is already assigned the address 192.168.1.44. The QUCM will be assigned to 192.168.1.45. Each network must be linked to the proper hardware port. After building and loading the project into the PLC, the QUCM will be at the new IP address. RPCSW is used to make additional configuration and do some testing. The first time RPCSW is started, it will complain that it can't find the setup file. Press F10 or Escape to enter the Serial Setup screen. Modbus TCP is chosen and the QUCM's IP address is entered. Index 255 is used to talk to the module. Online edit param port parameters shows the current setup. We will set the Ethernet port to drop 78 and change the mode to Modbus plus Cymax. We already know that drop 78 is not being used on the Ethernet. We can use Utility View Ethernet nodes to see the other Cymax drops on the network. Drop 6 is a Model 650 PLC. Drop 10 is an old EPE5. We can quickly test a connection from the QUCM to each of these nodes using the Register Viewer inside RPCSW. We simply add a couple of Modbus routes for the Ethernet port that point back out the Ethernet to the target device. Index 2 will point to the Model 650. The route is simply 78 to route back out the Ethernet port, comma 6. Index 3 will point to a Model 300 connected to port 2, drop 101. 
the route is 78, 10, 101. We need to check that TCP routing table entries 6 and 10 are zeroed to ensure the messages go out in as SIMAX and not as Modbus TCP. We now change the index to 2 and view the registers in the model 650. A check of register 8188 shows a model 655. The model 650 has an output card in registers 2 and 3 and an input simulator in register 4. We can watch the inputs change in register 4. Writing values to register 3 changes the output card. Changing the index to 3 will now point to the model 300. Register 8188 shows this to be a model 323. Register 1 contains 4 bits of input and 12 bits of outputs controlled by ladder code. We can move the inputs and watch register 1 change. You can see the RX and TX lights on EPE5 port 2 blink as we talk to the model 300. The index is set back to 255 to talk to the QUCM. We will save a copy of the setup by doing an offline fetch. We will check offline edit port parameters to make sure the setup is correct. Now offline write from memory to disk to save a copy. One last item is to write the setup to double EEPROM within the QUCM. We are now finished configuring the QUCM. Back in Unity Pro, we will build a few derived data types for the MSTR. The first is the control block. It has an array of nine words. The second is the data block. This must be as large as the biggest read or write count. We will choose 20 words for now. The third type is a statistics block. We will use these three integers later. Now we will make some variables using the DDTs. These variables will be used with the MSTR. MSTRs require the control and data variables to be located, so we will assign these new variables to percent %MW registers. The first register of the control block is the function code. A value of 2 generates a SIMAX non-priority read, 1 a non-priority write, 202 a priority read, and 201 a priority write. The second register is the error code. Next is the register count, then the starting remote register. The last elements of the block define the QUCM slot number and route for the message. These are packed hex values. We will set the function code to 2 for a read operation. The register count is 10 to read 10 words from the target. 
The starting register is 1. The QUCM slot number is 5, which is placed in the most significant byte. It is easiest to enter this value in hexadecimal. The route to the model 650 is 2 drops of 78,6. The length of 2 and drop of 78 are entered in hex. 78 is 4e in hexadecimal. The drop of 6 is now entered in the most significant byte in hex. Now we will make a new program function block section. The MBP MSTR function block is used. Our first try will be a brute force test where we tie the enable to input percent %i1. This is switch 1 on the Quantum's input simulator. We assign the model 650 control variable to the control block. We also assign the model 650 data variable to the data block. Build the application. And load it into the quantum. Turning on the input enables the MSTR. Looking at the data shows the CIMAX registers. Changing inputs show up in element 3 of the data block. The Ethernet RXTX lights on the QUCM get very active when the MSTR is active. We can also see the activity on the coax media converter that connects to the model 650. We are not now going to add some more logic to make it behave better and to get more of an idea about what is going on. Binary variables for active success and error are used to latch the MSTR on until it succeeds or fails. We will also capture the most recent error condition with the word to int block. Up counters will let us know about errors and successes.
Now, when the switch is turned on, we see our success counter incrementing with each read. We can see that our read is still working as before. Now let's change the function code to a write. We now see the error counter climbing and our error is 3009. This is Cymax error 9, which means we are trying to write a read-only register. Changing the count to 1 and the starting register to 3 will fix this problem. Now we can modify element 0 and watch the output card follow the value. Just for fun, we'll change it back to a read of remote registers 1 through 10 and then change the route to point to the Model 300. The new route will be 78,10,101, so we need to change the, the length of the route to 3 drops. As soon as we change the length to 3, we get error 3000A because the route is wrong. We now change the rest of the route to be 0A65 and it all starts working. 0A is for drop 10 and 65 is hex for drop 101. The data block now shows the Model 300 registers. RPCSW has some handy statistical screens to help with troubleshooting. Make sure the index is 255 to talk to the QUCM. Now select Utility View Statistics. There are multiple pages for each port. Pressing the page up and down keys move between screens while spacebar changes the port. The backplane stats are very helpful in this application. We can see the number of MSTRs active, we can see PLC run status and scan time. and we can see the most recent MSTR control and error blocks. Please visit niobrara.com for more information.